structure to, to, to all, um, all of the analytics. And I have just three slides, slides and this is one. So that gives you an idea of how the other two is going to be like. You know. So this is a very, I love this um, saying from Shakespeare. You know, say, um, though this be madness, yet there is a method in it. Now, a lot of people, and those, those guys are into machine learning and AI. You know, sometimes your, your algorithms, your, your codes will get a little bit crazy. But you need to make sure there's a structure to it. And the reason you're doing this is one, so that you can follow with what you're doing. And so when you leave that organization, I'm going to mention, it, I'm, I'm going to be talking about this, these things in terms of corporate environment. So that when you leave that organization, or when you go and leave, someone else can easily come in and take up what you've done from there, and at least either understand and complete it or the rest. Now, I remember some comments uh, that uh, Mr. Brown said, said that, you know, some, some people leave organizations and you find yourself, oh, can, where can we meet over the weekend so we can try and solve this problem? You know? If you've done your job well, nobody should try and come back to solve that problem. As you know, well, you guys have the same level of skill. You, know, you should be able to break it down to such a, to such a level that everyone will understand what you've done and they can take it from there and follow what you're doing. So, um, the Nigerian method of it is, um, you know, there's a method in every madness. Yeah, the Nigerian scene of, of this is not Shakespeare. <coughs> so, this is basically my presentation. So, I've just broken down the whole analytics uh, spectrum into storage, visualization, and advanced analytics in terms of platform documentation and access. You know, so what we're talking, if you look at the data storage section, you say in the corporate organization, the what you should have is basically like a single source of truth. A lot of organizations these days, you find a lot of Excel files being thrown here and there. So a person's data is different from, the department's data is different from the next department's data. And they're trying to report basically the same thing. But if you have a single source of truth, you know, you'll be able to have a particular location wherever you go and get information. Now, that's depending on the size of the organization, it could be or it could not be Excel. It could be that way. So you can, you can have an access database that you can store your data, right? And then a lot of people, so I'm, I'm assuming you have the smallest size of organization. Access is a free, a free database that you can deploy and store your information. And then from that access database, a lot of people can key into it and get information. So you have one place where everybody gets the same information. What that differs is the way you analyze it. Um, in big organization, you talk about you know, the Oracle, the SQL servers, and all of that. But the, the whole highlight of it is that you have one single place where you get your information from and how you do it. Now, in terms of data storage, you also have to have documentation of how that information is stored. In a typical database, you have tables. Those tables need to be defined. You could have um, some people do certain kind of calculations on the database. They need to define the business rule for that particular calculation. You know, should be a documentation somewhere where you can go and get the information as it as corresponds to that data that is there. And then access. You also have to control access in the structured environment. So, um, so as you you are the analysts, right? And then you have access to the whole data to actually generate the report. But not everybody gets the same detail of that report. Uh, I don't know. In Power BI, we have rural level security, right? And there's a reason they created that option. Okay. In SQL, we also have uh, rural level security as well. You know, so that means an analyst could get to see certain things, and then a manager gets to see more, and then the CEO gets to see everything. So you control access from your database and all that. Um, the next one I'm going to talk about is just data visualization. You also have to choose the right platform for your data visualization. Here, let's just as you see that Excel or Power BI from history. But uh, those, those, those people that don't know my position on yeah. <laughs> these things, you know. So you choose the right platform. There are certain things that are good to analyze in Excel, and there are certain things that are better to analyze to be analyzed in Power BI. You know. So Power BI is for what we call analytical reports. If I want to um, um, do an analysis of the financial statement, for instance, like the financial statement has a structured approach, approach to it, it has to follow a certain sequence. That would be better done in Excel. But if I want to do an analytical report whereby 
I want to put a chart that needs to be drew down into, I put some filters on the side, and make it beautiful, and give access to different people based on certain criteria and all that. That particular analytical report is based on, on Power BI. So you choose your platform work for your data visualization. Now, documentation for your visualization is also very important. And I say this because there is um, there, there was a company that was struggling with a particular report. And luckily for me, I was called in to try and explain what happened. And the, pro the, the problem was just simple. The person is that designed the report used unique account you know, for, for, for one of the formulas. And they wanted a count. So when they were counting, it was not corresponding to the unique count that was in, you know, in the in the individualization. So it was just a simple method of going reading the formula and everything. But if the person had documented the business rule that they use in aggregating that criteria as a unique count of the data in the system, that problem won't arise and they won't spend hours and days trying to figure it out. So you have to document, document your business rules when you develop your reports. So your reports should have basically two types. The analytical report that is on Power BI and the paper documentation of what that report contains and why is that. Um, also, the same access levels that apply to the data storage applies to your visualization as well. In Power BI now, you could deploy the role level security. I could send the same report out and different people see different things, different aggregations, based on their different levels. So you could do that. Um, for this. And then for the advanced analytics, you also have to choose a platform. Uh, for this we will say SSS. You know. <laughs> Which is not the most platforms. Platform. <laughs> 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 you know. So for your advanced analytics, you choose your platform. So we say SSS, or use a Python or your Arrow. There's a lot of others out there to check for Gartner advanced analytics and you know. Choose your platform, you do your, your same with your documentation, especially when you're writing your codes. Now, um, the is the Python man. You know, when you're writing your codes, you put in comments in between certain, set, certain lines so that whoever is reading that code can follow exactly what you're doing, especially when you want to define the function. You put in a lot of comments. What the function is going to do, and it's going to do it, blah, blah, blah. And then um, you explicitly define certain variables, you know, before you even start writing. Uh, any kind of code. So you try to get your documentation in one form or another into your advanced analytics. And then, I don't know how the access applies to that, but when you try to do advanced analytics, at the end of the day, it comes up as a report. So I assume it goes into the same level of element. You have. But if you're trying to do a prediction, for instance, and all that, it's just a prediction. So most people that need access to it already have access. Anyway, so that's just all I wanted to quickly talk about here in the lesson. Five minutes, five minutes. In summary, you know, we start with Shakespeare. It's good we heard the summary just as famous, which is Uncle Ben in Spider Man. You know, he <laughs> says, with great power comes great responsibility. That data will give you power. You know, you would, you would see things that even management would, would struggle to comprehend. You, know, you need to understand that this is a huge responsibility that has been placed on you. Sometimes they don't even know they've given you this responsibility. Because the truth is that you know everything. Let's talk about this, you're going to have a lot of information. You just need to be sure of how, what you do with it. You know, because at the end of the day, the analysis that you turn out, sometimes we either make or ruin that company. You know, so just make sure you're not using count instead of count if. Count if. Um, count instead of unique count. Or unique count instead of count. And all those kind of you know, silly mistakes. And any questions? <laughs> Just, uh, I, have, I, have a, I have a bit of a, um, two sided. As an entrepreneur, the last thing you made is that the analyst has, just when you say power, has a lot of power. Now, you are an entrepreneur and you hire an analyst that has this level of power, right? It's a source of worry to the entrepreneur. I don't know. It could be. It normally is. So because there are a lot of legal issues that come up, a lot of corporate governance issues that come up. Yes. And how I don't know, maybe I should ask the entrepreneur this question. How do you how do you manage this kind of situation where you know that you have to manage your analyst because of the amount of information that he has? Now to the analyst guy, 
an eye that knows that it has this, um, this level of power, is it, I don't know, you know sometimes it, it gets to us. Because you know that you have this and then you can. I don't know. What are the feelings of this entrepreneur that is here? <laughs> answer the entrepreneur side and then the data analyst answer from the data analyst side. So I'll just answer from the data analyst side. And sometimes when they give you this, this power, they, they have no idea that they're giving it to you. You know, it's just left for you to, as a professional, to be responsible about it. You, most of the time, they have no idea that you have that level of detail about the organization. Some of them, anyway, have no idea. While some will get you to sign contracts, you know, and uh, get you to sign certain uh, uh, NDAs and all of that for, for the organization. Um, <laughs> yes, <I'm but> <laughs> from the interpreter angle of it, so when you give it someone so much power, Okay, for the uh, entrepreneur side, right? To me, the easiest way to solve this problem is openness. Everybody should have that power. You know, the way to dissipate power is give everybody the power. Yeah. Yeah. So the thing is, you just like in an organization, for example. I mean, you do financials. You have a meeting. You see the financials of the company. This is how we're doing, this is how much revenue we're making, blah, 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 blah. The only thing you shouldn't give out is people's personal information. So, obviously, uh, salaries and stuff like that, that will cause problems within organizations. So, this guy is a manager, this guy is a manager, same level. This guy got a bonus of 10 million naira, this guy got a bonus of 2 million. He got a bonus of 10 million naira because he probably brought in work of 100 million naira. Why on earth should you get a bonus? But okay. guess what? The, the system of bonus should be clear, right? So you say, okay, if you do this, this is what you get. If you do this, that's what you get. But it doesn't mean that they should know that that guy did it. Did it. They are open in the sense that this is the how to calculate it. But somebody else, oh, this guy don't tell me you know, that. They will forget that he did the work and yeah. cause some problems internally. But as much as possible, just be open. Be open with everything. That way, you display that power. That's, that's the so I, in addition, I, I think what he's trying to say is not about it, but I think it's about compassion and realization. So if you are an entrepreneur, you have to come from the right track. But he's the data analyst. He knows what you are comfortable with, even what you want to give from him. So I, I, I guess that's so like what? You know, so, for example, in the firm, um, you have managers, people in the C suite. The next level. Yeah. So the guy at the upper end is trying to keep it. Maybe because of the level, maybe I don't know. Again, it's a culture thing as well. There's so yes, much. Yes. But that's culture culture that's prevalent here. Yeah. Like to come yeah, unfortunately, it's something that's so bad. Um, where, do you know where the problem starts? It's HR. They don't see the power of HR. They don't see it for big organizations. Small organizations can afford that. For big organizations, HR is like the culture. That's where culture really gets built. And that's the HR role. But many people don't know that that's really what the HR role is, to ensure that that culture and anyone coming in fits into that culture. You don't bring somebody in. This guy is such a hot analyst. Oh, good. He didn't come to work yesterday. Oh, OK. Uh, the rule states that if you don't come to work, you pay penalty. But that guy. That's what you're giving penalty. You leave it to somebody else. That's where cultures dance. Do you get it? You need to be able to kick him out. Do you get it? Have that confidence. Or else you won't build that culture. So that's where the problem starts. So it's a big, it's, it's an ugly problem. All right, any other questions? I think I have one. Sorry? Okay, you were talking about uh, creating like. Uh, like a procedure when it comes to when you are creating reporting platform and the likes. Yes, like so that. yeah. In our own case we usually call it this standard okay. operating procedure. So yeah. for every reporting tools you are creating, you have a procedure for. I just wanted to ask, do you kind of have a kind of a structure that you think I'm not saying maybe it's a standard structure or do you have a kind of preference for some structures that I think work well when you are creating Okay, now, now with the with one of experience is that you know, because because the process of creating reports these days is so short, it's basically you assessing the database, developing the reports, share. You know, but what what actually takes time is to document the report before it's being used and have it approved. 
I, I don't know if, if I'm making sense to you. Yeah. So there's really no process in terms of, okay, this is how I get the data and transform it and do that. Because in the database, you already have um, the, the tables, especially when you have a, a multi-dimensional database. It's already prepared for you in a certain way. And you've already been given access, you know, to certain tables that you just be, all you just need to do is access it and then report. So when that report has already been defined as a document and say this report is um, monthly sales report, and this is how it calculates total sales, and this is how it calculates things, and this is how it calculates that, and this is how it and my have already signed up on it. Right? This is a monthly sales report. You know, you will not go and develop that particular report. Now, while developing that report, you also have a structure in this Power BI that you're going to use. So you could say in the Power BI templates, um, logo to the right, headers on top, information, um, KPIs, you know, across, that's just, that's just my numbers special that. Okay. You, you know, KPIs, top row across uh, boards as uh, like a, as text, so 5, 3K, 12, 12K sales, high sales, 5, what is this? Um, chats underneath. And if there are in report filters, especially with Power BI, um, left, down, and uh, line across. So, and every report that I was going to review, assuming uh, I am the organization, will follow that same pattern. The reason is that, so that whoever is going to use the reports, across all reports, knows where to look for certain things that they need. Well, I'm looking for the key it should be at the top. Oh, I need to do some filters, it should be on this um, left-hand side, um, down there. Or well, my chart should be at the top, and then my drill down should be down below that. So you're just going to have a particular structure for, for your reports. It's just like you have templates for power, power quits. Your organizations have templates that so you have to follow. The you should have something similar for your reports as well. I don't know that answer. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. We can say that welcome back home. <laughs>